Hello guys, welcome back. In today's session, let us discuss about the material ledger in S4 HANA. Material ledger is not a new concept in SAP. We also had this concept or this functionality in the ECC versions. But let us check today how it is different from ECC and what new features are added in S4 HANA. And also let us go into the configurations of material ledger. So first let us go into the advantages of material ledger. The main purpose of using a material ledger is actual costing. In addition to actual costing, it also helps us to do material valuation in multiple currencies and multiple valuation methods. SAP supports up to two currencies like company code currency and group currency and up to three valuation methods, legal valuation method, group valuations and profit center valuations. So we can use material ledger in the combinations of these three valuation methods and two currencies. And actual costing is an optional functionality to use in SAP. It was same in ECC and it is same in S4 HANA. So let us now go into the differences of material ledger in ECC and S4 HANA. In ECC, material ledger was not a mandatory component to be activated. But whereas in S4 HANA, it is a mandatory component. So that means the functionality did not change in ECC versus S4 HANA. Whereas in S4 HANA, now material ledger is technically active all the time. So without material ledger active, we cannot perform material transactions such as posting of goods receipt or invoice receipt. And in ECC, if we want to perform actual costing, material ledger should be activated. The same in S4 HANA also. Even S4 HANA, actual costing is not a mandatory component. Although actual costing requires material ledger and material ledger is to be activated by default, the client can always go for an option to not use actual costing. And the other major change in ECC versus S4 HANA is how the material ledger data is stored. In ECC, we use various tables like MLIT, MLPP, and etc. Whereas in S4 HANA, we are aware that S4 HANA uses a universal general approach. So all the material ledger data is now stored in AC Doka. So there is no reconciliation required and the data is easy to fetch. And only the material ledger header table, which is MCHD, is now stored in BKPF. So all the tables for material ledger which we used in ECC are now redundant. And coming to the currencies that we assign to material ledger, in ECC, we had an option to transfer these currencies from FI or CO. If parallel valuation and multiple currencies are being used in FI, we can assign the same currencies to material ledger. But whereas in S4 HANA, it is no longer possible. Although the material ledger configuration screens even now show these options for importing the currencies from FI or CO, but those options are now disabled. Assigning currencies to material ledger is only a manual assignment in S4 HANA. Let, now let us go to the system and let us do the configurations. Material ledger is a component of controlling. So we go to the controlling settings, product cost controlling, actual costing or material ledger. So if you see, SAP has binded the two components, actual costing and material ledger into one settings under the configuration node in IMG. So here, these are the main steps that we need to do for activating the material ledger. So first, we define the material ledger types and we assign the currencies for the material ledger. And then we assign this material ledger to the valuation areas. And after the assignment, we need to activate the material ledger for the valuation areas. And in my current system, I am already having the material ledger active for the existing plants in the valuation areas. So now, let us try creating a new valuation area and then we will go into the material ledger configurations. So if you see in the system, material ledger is a part of controlling. So we can find it in the controlling node, product cost controlling, actual costing and material ledger are together clubbed in one configuration node in IMG. So these are the three steps in configuring the material ledger. First, we need to define the material ledger type and assign currencies. Whatever currencies you want to do the valuation, we need to assign those currency types 
and once it is assigned we will assign this material ledger type to the valuation area and without the assignment of the material ledger type to the valuation area we cannot perform any material transactions on that valuation area we will see that also and after that we need to activate the material ledger for the valuation areas so in my existing setup already the material ledger is active so i will go and i will define a new plant so that we can check how without material ledger activation what will happen and we can later on activate the material ledger for this one so i'll go to the logistics general and valuation level is set to plant so let me define a new plant okay the plant is created now i'll go to the storage location Okay. So let us use the existing storage location. So now let us go and assign this plant to the company code. Okay, so let us also go to the logistics settings. Logistics general, material master, basic settings, material type, and under the attributes for material types, we will try to create a material of raw material type. Type is ROH, and here for this plant, we need to activate the quantity and value updations. Only then we can try creating a purchase order. Now let us go and extend an existing material for this one. So I am having an existing material. I will extend this for this new plant. Okay, so I'm not defining any MRP type for this one. So here if you see under the accounting one details, the material ledger is not activated for this one. And also there is no price determination enabled for this one because unless until the material ledger is activated and we assign some price determination for that, 
we cannot see it here and standard price is active for this one so let me enter some standard price for this one okay let me enter the valuation class it is and it is at 792 now <clears throat> okay so this is a finished product so we defined a finished product and now let me go and create a purchase order for this one I am procuring a quantity of 10 and let us enter this new plant. <clears throat> okay, this assignment is not done. Let us go back to the settings and check and assign this purchasing organization for this plant. So, assignment, material management, purchasing organization to plant. Okay, so let me re enter this transaction so that it gets refreshed. Okay. Okay, it says for this plant, the account assignment is mandatory. So let me go back earlier. We, I think we had done for uh, raw material, but now we are extending a finished good. So that is why we are still facing this error. So let us go back to the same logistic general settings and under the material master, we'll define the attribute types. I am using FERT. So we are having FERT and let us activate. So let me again re enter. Okay, let me enter a pricing condition. We are saving the purchase order. The purchase order is now successfully created. Now let us try to post a goods receipt for this purchase order. Let us go to Miko. <coughs> Item OK. Let us also enter the storage location. Save it. OK, I think the posting periods are not open. So let us go and open the posting periods for this one. So let us first check what is the existing posting period open. It is 2 2020. So we are using April to March. So this is uh, period 3. So let us go to MMPV and close the period 2. <coughs> okay, it is giving some error. Let us check what is the error message. Okay, we have entered period as. 2 but the current open period is 2 so that is why we are receiving this error so we enter it as 3 and close period only okay so the period is closed so now let us go back to MMRV and check what is the existing period so it is 03 2020 
fine now let us go here and now let us try to save it okay we are also having the account determination because we did not do the account determinations so these are not any material ledger related things these are the general uh, account determination settings that we do in uh, ecc also so let us go to material master okay this is logistics general material management valuation and account assignment account determination without wizard so i am not creating any new groups i am using the existing ones in this company code whatever the existing plans are created i am following the same so that we need not again go through all the settings valuation classes are already defined account grouping for movement types everything are already defined so as we have assigned this plant to uh, the same grouping code all the accounts which are already assigned to this one takes place so let us go back and let us try to save it again it says wrx for z792 is not possible okay so okay let me re-enter the migo transaction So here if we see this is the error which we are looking for so it says material ledger is not active so we cannot perform this transaction so now we start the material ledger transactions <clears throat> let us go and configure the material ledger so we, we earlier discussed that there are three steps in configuring the material ledger first we need to define the material ledger type and assign currencies and then this material ledger needs to be assigned to the valuation area and then we activate it so let us create a material ledger type okay so here we are having company code currency by default and let us also try adding the group currency save it now we will assign this to the valuation area so our plant is amp3 to create a new entry So the status is green. Both the currencies which we are using in the material ledger are integrated with FI automatically. So we discussed earlier that the entering of currencies is not automatic. We need to enter the currencies manually and then it goes and checks check with FI. So accordingly it will check whether it is integrated successfully or not. So now activate the material ledger for this valuation area. <coughs> Before that, let us check if we are having any issues with material ledger. Everything is fine. It looks fine. Okay. Let us activate the material ledger. So here if we see, we are activating the material ledger. So this is where we define the price determination. Earlier we saw in the material master that the price determination is blank and the material ledger is also not enabled. So now we are enabling the material ledger. And after that we are defining whether it is a single level or a multi-level or transaction based so for now let me go with the transaction based and this one this i'll come later so save it it says after activating the material ledger live data must be converted <clears throat> okay so now the material ledger is activated so now let us go and check the settings for valuation profiles So I am already having a valuation profile that is defined and I am having two currencies and we are using legal valuation and group valuation. <clears throat> so with material ledger it is possible to evaluate the materials using these two company codes and these two valuation views and this is already assigned 
to the controlling area AMUS and the valuation profile is AMUS. Okay. So, now we need to change the material ledger to productive. In the material ledger, okay. Okay, here if you see there is one, there are few other configurations. Number ranges are not required now because all the material ledger documents are directly posted in uh, AC Doka and uh, document number is automatically generated. And configure dynamic price change. Dynamic price changes I am not using now. Uh, dynamic price changes with, I mean with dynamic price change, the actual price of the current month will be the standard price of the next month. So if you want such feature to be enabled by uh, if it's a requirement from the client, then we need to activate the dynamic price changing here. So now there is a transaction code wherein we need to set this material ledger to productive or the valuation area. So it is CKM start, but we can also find it out somewhere here. Okay, here we are having, we are having it in valuation, actual costings. So, set valuation area as productive. So, we are having this AMP3, exchange rate, background processing not required. So, there are no errors, we can go ahead and set this valuation area to productive. Sorry. Okay, let us go back. We are using it. Let us try again. It is successful. Now, let us go back to the same material which we were seeing earlier. Or else, let me go to the change view. 626. Let me go to the accounting details for the plant AM P3. So now we can see that material ledger is activated and whatever the price determination we have determined, the transaction based which we have given is now available here. And if you see there is a change in the view earlier uh, to now. So earlier view we had only one currency and it asked us to enter the standard price or the moving average price based on the pricing control that we have selected. But now if we see we have enabled two currencies the company code currency and the group currency. So both of these are now visible here in the material master also. And if we go to the material price analysis, even here we can see the valuation in both company code currency and group currency. So we need not always go to FI and we need not perform any currency translations. The material valuations are automatically happening in both the currencies. So we can see all the transactions that are happening here. So, now we will go back to the configuration which we uh, thought of coming back uh, later. Actual costing and while activating, there is a setting which says price determination binding. So, what is the price determination binding? So, now if we see the material master. We cannot change this here. This cannot be changed. This is something that needs to be changed at the material ledger level. While we are giving the settings, we need to be changed. But what if for a single material, we require a different pricing determination? For example, we want to use a single or a multi-level method for this one. So instead of changing it for the entire material ledger, what we can do is, there is a transaction called CKMM, which we use for changing the material price determination. So for example, for this particular material, for this plant, we want to change the price determination. Now currently it is set to 2. I will set this to 3. And in the test run, let me try to execute this one. Okay, it says for the new, uh, for the pricing determination 3, the single level or multi level, the price control should always be a standard price. So enter the standard price here. So now it has successfully changed it. So let me remove the test run and execute it. 
what is the error message okay we are uh, having this open so that is why we could not do it let me try again <clears throat> so now it is successfully changed now let me go back and open the same material So if we see now, this is changed. But what if we go to the settings here? So here if we see, even though for that particular material, we have changed the price determination to 3, at the material ledger configuration settings, for this valuation area, we are still having the price determination as 2. So if we enable this one, now till now this is disabled, but what if we enable this one and save it? Now again, let me go to this CKMM transaction and now let me try to change this from 3 to 2. Let me go to test run. Yes. <clears throat> it says, ok. Let me go back. Okay, so now this is changed to 2. Now, here also it is changed to 2. Now, again, let us go back and let us try to change this from 2 to 3. And here with a standard, let us go to test run. So, here it says plans with varying or binding price determination. That means as we have enabled this binding price, uh, price determination binding in the valuation area, and here it is set to 2, we cannot change this from 2. What we have done after we have enabled this price determination binding, we have changed this price determination in CKMM tree code from 3 to 2. It is fine because at the material ledger settings it is defined as 2. But now if we again want to change it from 2 to 3, it is giving this error message. It does not allow us to change this. So even if we can try also with this one, it gives a warning message and go back to the material and let us check again. You cannot change this from 2 to 3. <clears throat> so, this is how this price determination binding works, and this is the entire concept of material ledger from the configuration perspective. And in the further videos, we will try uh, the actual costings and uh, the currency valuations, uh, uh, the material valuations. Thank you.